Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig, it's nine o'clock, it's time for another Talk Magic. And today I'm here with somebody who everybody in the UK Magic community knows, and that's because he is the face of Prop Dog. He is one of the most knowledgeable magicians I know. He's got an incredible backstory, but more importantly, he's got some very exciting news uh, that we're going to be talking about. He's going to be setting up an, his own company, Monster Magic. We're going to be talking about that. Everybody is going to know this person. If you've ever shopped with Prop Dog or you've ever picked up the phone or seen one of their lives, you'll know who we're talking about. I am, of course, talking about the one and only Alex Kirk. How are you doing, Alex? I'm very well. Very well. I was always wondering what you were going that's the only reason I'm doing the interview is just to find out uh, uh, what you're going to say about me and I'm chuffed. Uh, so let's talk well, about it's that. True. It's true. I mean, uh, I know you fairly well, but you are so knowledgeable. Like you're more knowledgeable than most magicians. You're very well read. Uh, you're one of these people who I kind of think of as almost like a, uh, a, a human tarbell course. You know, you can kind of, I could, I could ask you a question about a particular routine and you could give me 10 different places that it's been in print before, which is really important when you do what you do. But anybody, you know, you're so recognizable in the community because of uh, how big Prop Doc has been over the last few years. And obviously you've been a huge part of that That's as far as I'm concerned, right from the very beginning. Um, I wanted to interview you because A, I want to find out more about your backstory. I want to find out more about you and how you got into magic and so on and so forth. But also, I'm sure that a lot of people that are watching this are aware there's going to be changes happening over the next few months with Prop Dog, and you're eventually moving into a different direction. Uh, and that's something that I want everyone to know about as well, because that's super exciting. That's like really exciting. Um, but first of all, Alex, would you mind mm -hmm. if we start at the very beginning uh -huh. and talk about your origin story? Because everybody knows you as Alex and Prop Dog, Alex and Prop yeah. Dog. But where, where did it all start? How did you get into magic? Well, it started, so uh, my mum was a dental nurse and uh, my dad was a patient and uh, they met and uh, whatever happened. And yeah. then, uh, and then in, uh, yeah, and then the early 70s, uh, out I came. And... Um, uh, basically, <laughs> I won't go through the rest of it, but um, when I was uh, 18 or so, so not to say I didn't have an interest in magic before that or an interest in magic before me. Um, I think I loved performing. Uh, not, not, yeah, I do love performing. I hate before going on stage, hate after bit, but I just love being on stage. Anything mm -hmm. either side of it. I absolutely hate. I've got nerves, and then I hate anyone saying you were great because I think I don't know if I was or not. I don't know if you're telling me the truth. But anyway, so so um, uh, as far as the origins concerned, was obviously grew up watching. You know, back in the eighties when I was watching it, you had Paul Daniels and Wayne Dobson, um, and it was more. What really got me was that they had um, guest stars, and the idea is that these people travelled the world. You know doing magic tricks and then go to another country and do more magic tricks i thought is that a job that's amazing mm -hmm. that, is, that is an incredible job um and uh, and also yeah obviously tommy cooper i love props um and you know so tommy cooper uh you know not the best magician in the world but i really want i wanted to go around his house and see some of those props you know for me he was the luckiest guy to have magic props anyway so so i had an interest in magic growing up and then um i was working in bath i was working in a restaurant in bath um in a year out when i was about 18 and uh it was pump rooms in bath and outside the pump rooms there's these big performed in uh the bath square the plaza uh and um one of the people who performed there back then was future president of the magic circle noel britain so oh, wow. i met noel when he was yeah so no i met noel when he was still sticking his head in the bucket of water uh to american tourists and um yeah i just basically uh, got to meet noel basically got to meet noel got to meet jj and um 
uh, various other magicians that Noel knew. And um, I, so I became, basically, I became a street performer, dreadful street performer, absolutely awful. Um, I will tell you my act if you really, really press me, but it was dire. And <laughs> I want to know. I want to know. I want to know what was the act. It became escapology. Eventually, it became escapology. I, I got uh, the Mark Wilson course of magic, and uh, there's some there's some escapology in the back, um, which I did. Um, before that, I was uh, blindfolded, fire juggling on a unicycle on top of an ironing board. Um, was my first ever. I know. Um, I'm not, I can't even juggle, so I'm not quite sure what I thought I was doing. <laughs> and actually it was Noel I'm not forget Noel going you know most people make their act look dangerous but it's completely safe you are just risking your life for no good reason whatsoever so um, yeah and uh, and Noel 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 took Noel he didn't tell me he sent me to International Magic he said tell Martin behind the counter that Noel sent you and he'll help you out and I thought this was very bizarre. The idea of someone knowing, uh, you know, my acquaintance, Noel in Bath, up in London in a magic shop, you know, nuts. I had no idea how good Noel was, no idea of what he was in the magic community at all. And didn't even know that International Magic was the place back then, or what a great guy Martin was. Ron was still, Ron, Ron was still in the shop actually back then. Um, wow. And uh, yeah, yeah, and I went up and, very shyly said, oh, you know, are you Martin? Yeah. Noel in Bath sent me up and he, uh, yeah, he gave me um, some magic books and Professor's Nightmares and, and that was it, back on the train, back uh, back to Bath and uh, yeah, yeah. So it all started from there. And that, that is essentially why, so going back to being well read, uh, that is possibly wise because I had this sort of two and a half hour train journey. So I'd buy a book and then I'd have some cards or, or whatever it was for two and a half hours on the train and I'd go through go through the book and the books fascinated me because, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what it is about, but when you see books, you just see all that knowledge all in there and, yeah. and it becomes addictive. Going, What's in this one? What's in that one? And, um, and yeah, and I love reading around topics. Um, as well, so you were saying about, about not, not leaving the project unturned and wanting to take it as far as you possibly can. Um, and, and, I, and I think I'm very much the same. So if someone says, uh, you know, I don't know, his, I don't know, this guy's got this concept, I'll go, oh, that's interesting. And then I'll start reading about it. And um, that's why I think sort of crediting of things is quite good because you can then go, oh, well, I can backtrack right back to the origins and see if I just take it somewhere else. Or, or, or whatever it might be. Um, yeah. So yeah, so the reason I'm probably well read is because I was stuck on a train for bloody two and a half hours every time I wanted to go and buy something. Wow. Okay. <laughs> and, and were you, so were you um, like a full-time street performer at that point? Because you're talking about this is a gap year and you were working in a restaurant, but you were also doing street performing. Did you move into full-time street performing or did you go back to university you know after the year out yeah, so, so it was yeah so it was my year out um and i did a bit of traveling as well um which i did you know took the show off to amsterdam and stuff like that um and so, so yeah so performed pretty much around europe that was the way of doing interrailing and stuff uh and then went to university and uh had no real desire to be at university whatsoever that was my parents going mm. you know please go to university and get yourself some sort of qualification because we're very worried about you um <laughs> and so i did um and uh, yeah did a business course that i paid no attention to do whatsoever because uh, suddenly i was in london which was where international magic was so i could go and sit there uh, on a saturday or actually you know but i meant to be in a lecture I was probably, uh, you know, sitting with, with Martin and, uh, yeah, you know, in that magic shop, having cups of tea, uh, getting up to no good. Um, and I think I can remember Jerry, I think I can remember Jerry Sadowitz being in there one day, going, don't worry, Alex, I used to be like you, and now I work in the magic shop. And uh, <laughs> that, that was, that was, <laughs> that, that, that was, that was a big inspiration. Um, 
and yeah, so so magic just stuck with me then. And um, I tried proper jobs, did my proper jobs, uh, you know, got married, had a family, and was just doing magic on the side down the pub. Um, and the occasional were doing, gig. Were you doing paid gigs or were you mainly doing it as kind of more of a hobbyist than an amateur? I did a lot. Well, so I did a lot of street performing um, in, whilst, in, whilst at university and then paid gigs after that. Um, and then when I got married and had kids, it became very inconvenient for me to be out in the evenings or away at weekends. And I think because if I'd, um, it was the era of, of um, the Bonzels and the Rob James and uh, the Paul Martins and, and all of that were, were coming to the fore. And it was when, you know, there really was a calling or I possibly could have slipped into that, but uh, I chose a more sensible route, much, you know, uh, I don't know, pressures, peer pressure, not wanting to stick my whole, I was enjoying magic, but yeah, um, I guess I never saw it as a career at that point. And when kids came along, um, it felt like I should probably get a nine job. So I did and hated it. <laughs> but there you go. A lot of people will do. So how did you go from a nine to five job to being basically the face of Prop Dog? How did that all come about? <laughs> Uh, gosh. Um, so um, I was I was very unhappy at my job. Uh, had a had a bout of depression. Um, thought I needed to change some stuff. Uh, so I left the job I was in. Um, you know, uh, after quite a few months off with depression, um, which is. Um, Interesting, so the therapist sort of got me, you know, was probably the person who mentioned magic. So I actually did, uh, did a couple of shows at Priory, um, which was my therapy, which sort of was a bit bizarre. And um, uh, yeah, so I knew I couldn't go back to get having a, a nine to five job. Plus my daughter wasn't very well and so it was very awkward going to interviews going, that's fine, but I probably need to leave about three because I've got to be home for four to, to be with my daughter, which is yeah. a tough interview. I mean, no matter how good I was going to be at that job, um, yeah, that, that was always going to be difficult. So, um, yeah, so basically I just I couldn't find, I couldn't find a job that fitted what I needed. And I'd be going to Prop Dog, having stuff made at Prop Dog. Um, Dave was looking for someone um, in the workshop back then. Um, and I think, uh, yeah, so I did that. I think I was probably, you know, cutting keys for ring flights uh, for hours and hours and hours. Um, but loving it, you know, <laughs> strangely. <laughs> um, yeah, so I did that and then... Um, uh, just yeah just stayed ever since and uh, my life's changed dramatically since then and prop dog has, has pretty much saved me on several occasions but it definitely saved me uh, at that point as well because i didn't know what i was going to do um yeah so how long have you been at prop dog now good question i think i started in 2019 okay maybe 2018 maybe 20 don't know about yeah. five years four or five yeah yeah something like that yeah 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 all blends i'm hopeless at chronology can't even say it very well and you've seen obviously a lot of people come and go uh and you've seen prop dog really kind of become at one yeah. point probably the biggest arguably the biggest magic shop in the uk you know it's the one that everybody went to um yeah. and and you and Dave had a big part to play with that. Um, was that ever the intention with Prop Dog? Was it the intention to like build it into this huge, massive company, or or was it just kind of just going with it? 
there's, there's just an ethos uh, at Prop Dog, which was, and Dave is great. So Dave, if that's what you think, that's what you think. We'll go with that, you know. Um, and also the people that, that were working there, so Jason as well, me and Jason had a great crack. Um, and uh, yeah, he's really supported me over the few, the, my, my tricky years. Um, and it's just been a lot of fun where anything goes and you can, you know, you, you can say a product's rubbish, you can crush it in the, you know, two ton press downstairs, if that's what you think of it. Um, and that, that ethos um, just created, a, I think a fun, lively, environment and community that people really really bought into i don't think it was very you know it wasn't managed it was there was no there was no vision there's no pr company um not at all it was it was just us being possibly a little bit bonkers but um going going with our hearts quite a lot um, well, i think one of the things that prop dog did so well is focus on the customer service and making customers feel special and kind of going above and beyond to make sure that people get what they want when they want it as quickly as possible and i think that's one of the things that at the very beginning really set prop dog apart from everywhere else yeah yeah i mean yeah definitely and that isn't easy and it's not um it's certainly not the, not always business but it, but so in a way, it does make complete business sense. Great customer service has got to be good for business, uh, without a doubt. But it does come at a cost. So you've got to choose, I think, essentially. You know, you could just say, well, you've had it for 30 days. So what do you want to, you know, read the policy, 30 days, no good. Or you can go, well, that shouldn't have happened, should it? We'll, we'll replace it. We'll fix it. Whatever. Um, and obviously the latter the latter is definitely the prop dog way um and um yeah and I, I you know dave uh i don't know he's been an inspiration with that and just doing the right thing is is, is really important to him and i think he's always you know he, he's that, that is definitely something that he's put into prop dog fun and doing the right thing that's great that's, I mean, that's that's obviously really important. And you've obviously, and we're going to be talking about what's happening with Prop Dog now in a bit and where you're kind of moving on to. But before we do, one thing that Prop Dog has always done, and you've been very vocal about this as well, is you've got no problem trashing products if you perceive them. <laughs> to be. Um, you know, like I've seen posts on social media going, hey, this is not in stock at Prop Dog. Hey, we're proudly saying that we're not going to advertise there. That's something that I've never seen another business do. Now, I do this, but that's because I'm not affiliated to any company. But as a magic shop saying, hey, we're not going to stock this. That's a very <laughs> ballsy thing to do. It's going to piss off people that potentially, <laughs> you know, do you know what I mean? It's like. Where did that all come from? And you know, um, so, so the, the not in stock at Prop Dog, I, I, I will take credit for that. Um, and that came from a book by uh, uh, I, I was reading a book called uh, by George Lois, I think it is. Um, and it's got I don't know, uh, great ideas for brilliant people or something, something like that. Anyway, which I bought it going, I'm brilliant. I, I should read this book. Um, and he was an advertising executive and he, he basically just said, you know, tell the truth or whatever. Um, so from reading that book, I came up with the idea of twisting because everyone was going, no, it's in stock. It's available now. Buy it. Buy it. And so I thought it'd be quite funny um, to advertise the products that we wouldn't stock because we didn't think they were worth stocking. So, yeah. So yeah. not in stock at Um And uh, yeah. Yeah. And it did spark a few, <laughs> did spark a few things. Um, but that was much easier than when you're trashing something that you have got in stock. That that is where the uh, the prop dog ethos uh, doesn't make certainly doesn't make any business sense. But um, you know you, you've got you've got to be honest. And and we buy stuff in with little knowledge. We're not we know we know wiser than than the average punter who's watched the trailer quite often. Um, it's changed a little bit now. You get dealer videos and and, and so. Um, 
that's sort of improved a lot. Uh, but yeah, sometimes you, you you take a punt on something and go, oh my god, and you've got no, and 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 the wise person would go, right, we're going to have to, you know, big it up or you know, but no, we just couldn't do it. Just couldn't do it. Um, just you've just got to say, look, no, it's, you don't want it. But I think that's why so many people love prop dog because they. They, they they felt that they were safe shopping a prop dog because they knew they were going to get an honest opinion and whatever it is that they're looking for, which you don't at all magic shops, let's be honest. It's 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 a case of, you know, it's just the ad copy on the website and it's like, hey, this is this trick. This is the, then they just stock everything. And, you know, the, 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 you know, the, the, that's one of the things that made prop dog really stand apart, I think. Yeah, I think that's stocking everything. Um... I can understand it. I can really understand it. Um, but uh, we, yeah, so we'd sit around. It was usually Jason and I, and we'd go through all the latest products and we'd pick and we'd choose which ones we thought were going to get it and which ones we didn't think were, were worth stocking. And that's certainly a, so, so the big problem is that people want the latest thing immediately. And because we were we were busy curating, we were probably a couple of days behind other magic shops. So a lot of people uh, possibly have bought on pre-sale or or done whatever before we've even got it on our website. Uh, so so that is is certainly a downside with what we were doing. Um, but um, it did mean that when we got something in, we actually felt it was worth having. And there's an element of choice you could, you know, if you go into Sainsbury's, you could, you know, you've got, I don't know, you've got Hellman's, Hellman's Original, Hellman's Light, Hellman's Super Light, and all the other brands. It's like, you don't need that, you just don't need that choice, essentially. I don't think you need to have so much choice. Um, and that's certainly the problem, they just sell, just sell the good stuff. Which is what I'm trying to carry on. And and you know, I mean, as somebody who's been doing this for a few years now, for like four or five years, and seeing all of these terrible products come in, what do you think that we can do as an industry? Like, uh, Dave was very, very outspoken about his dislike of Murphy's. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and, and kind of like you know he's he, and that's who Dave is. He's got no problem calling a spade a spade and saying exactly how things are. Not at all. Like which which is fine. And but the, the, I mean, regardless of who's to blame or what's to blame, there is an issue. There is so much stuff that comes out these days. I I, I was speaking to somebody about this. The uh, Dan Harlan. I was speaking to Dan Harlan about this the other day. And back ten or fifteen years ago, you'd have like two things come out every three months you'd have like a pack of trick and you know probably yeah. uh the late l and l dvd set and that's it and and that's all you'd have now you refresh um the murphy's website <laughs> and there's like an extra 15 tricks coming out every day and it's like it's impossible to buy Imagine everything poor me and jason having to sit through that you gotta it's sit through going oh my god you know and if I see any more any more people walking across deserted railway tracks or whatever they're doing, I mean, geez, um, it's painful. It really is. Um, and I think what shames me is, you know, uh, I'm not I'm not I'm not an obsessive environmentalist or anything, but the amount of landfill that the magic industry uh, must create, um, you know, uh, I think either people have got massive uh, bottom drawers or, or this stuff is just uh, you know reclaiming land in Holland somewhere it is um, it's shocking um, and it is very difficult but I think so what I've noticed is certainly when I started was that magic tricks or, or books were written by people who have been performing magic for a long time and it was their tricks or their versions of tricks that had been out before you know it was their routines um, and that's when you got a book out, when you've been doing it for donkey's years. Um, and you, you know, you, and you, you know, I don't, I think Michael Amar just wrote his book of magic. I don't know quite what else he wrote. I don't know if he's written anything else. You know, Alex Elmsley's just got the two volumes. That's it. It wasn't a book of book, then another book, then volume nine, none of that nonsense. Um, 
and you had tricks out when you'd invented something and you'd been doing it for years, like Dave's ring flight, he'd been doing it for years and people had pestering him for one. So he released it. Um, you, 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 you know, you'll release a trick, but you've, you've been performing it for, for donkey's years before you release it. Um, and that's because, you know, you're someone who does gigs and you go out and you perform and not necessarily releasing a magic trick isn't your sole source of income. And I think now, now you have people who, who it is. So you have the Julio Montoros and whoever else it, it might be. I don't want to name too many people. Um, uh, who've got, you've, 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 basically their livelihood depends on them releasing a trick a month. Yeah. So they've got to release a trick a month and they, they can't all be good. They just can't. It's, you know, even, you know, Dan Harlan can't can't knock out a, a decent trick a month uh you know so uh, it takes far longer than that um and like you say with adding value to your projects to make them worth um i mean i don't know how much how much was cheeky how much was quantum deck how much did that sell for uh, uh, cheeky was 30 the quantum deck was 30 as well i think 35 maybe right uh, and so how long, how long was the tutorial for cheeky uh Two and a half hours cheeky was right. quantum deck was five and a half hours. Yeah. You don't get a five and a half hour tutorial <laughs> unless unless you've been playing with that baby for a while. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. That, that I mean, so I mean, you know, um I watched I watched tutorials whilst I'm on the on I'm on a stationary bike in the gym. So uh, you know, <laughs> I think uh, quantum deck's probably four or five sessions, but um <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that's the difference. So, so the difference is you could have people who really put the work in and think, right, that's worth thirty pounds. Uh, it's um, you know whatever it is. So, so yeah, I don't know. You, maybe maybe you've done um, many tackle deck is a big thing close to my heart. I've been trying to release the many tackle project, but I keep on coming up with more stuff to add to it. But at some point, I've got to stop. But. But yeah, somebody again, that's worth 30 pounds. It's a deck and it's my, you know, I've exhausted everything to do with it. And then you release it. Uh, but unfortunately now there's no one, there's no one watching or curating it. There's no one curating it. I don't know where it gets curated apart from the prop dog at the moment um, and my new venture. Uh, I don't know where it gets stopped where's the sieve where's you know who's, yeah. who's, it's panning for gold isn't it you know you can be there for ages and 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 it's very hard so it's murphy's is the big is the big wholesaler it's very hard for them to turn the trick down of course it's they don't i mean who knows if it's going to be the big the big seller uh um, they made mistakes a problem yeah and they that murphy's attitude is it's subjective if yeah. they don't stock something because they consider it to be not very good, there's somebody out there that might consider it to be absolutely brilliant. Like, who are they to say, no, we shouldn't stock this because this is not going to be good for the end consumer? I know I've um, hated stock with a passion. Yeah. That, you know, um, I was talking to this uh, Lloyd Barnes about this recently. Um, there was a trick that came out... Um, can't remember the name of it. It was a blister trick by Jimmy Strange, but it was a celebrity on the blister. Oh, yeah. And I hated that. Like I, I hated it so much. And Lloyd loves it and actually does it. And, and his attitude to it was, if Murphy's hired you to say what tricks they should or shouldn't wholesale, you would definitely turn around and say, don't wholesale that one, it's terrible. But I yeah. love it. So, you know, Murphy's attitude is let's throw everything out there because we don't know what people are going to like or not like. Ah, which is fair, which is, I mean, yeah, I don't know what I'd do in, in their position. Apart, I mean, and I guess they are just buying a product in the same way. So if someone will offer them a product, um, it gives them more choice. They don't know whether it's going to sell or not. They've only got to buy X number of items of it. And whatever um so the, so so yeah so here we go right so makes business sense for murphy's uh to stock 
everything they can and to supply all the dealers. In the same way, it makes the dealer can't make the decision either, can they? Yeah. It's kind of the same thing for the dealer. If a dealer turns around and says, this is not very good, there might be somebody out there that actually would like it. Yeah, yeah. But how, but so, so how many people do you think, if one person buys it, is it a good trick? Well, th from a sales point of view, no, absolutely not. It's a flop. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, here's the thing. So uh, I don't know. I, so I don't know. So I struggle with what, I, what I've set up and what I've sunk all my cash into because it's absolutely nuts. Um, is there a reason? So on, on most uh, magic websites, um, uh, certainly, uh, certainly one of them, for example, uh, there's only very limited amount is in stock. The rest is available. Um, and why is it not all in stock? Why is only some of it available on a special order? Because they're not buying most of it in to check themselves if it's any good. They're just listing everything that Murphy's has available. And if somebody orders it, they just order it for Murphy's as a one-off item and ship it off to the person that's ordered it. Right. So they so they lose so so by not getting it in, they lose nothing. Because basically they only have to order it in when when someone's ordered it from them, they just then order it in for Murphy's. If they thought it was good, they'd have it to ship the next day, wouldn't they? Yeah. Yeah, they would. They would. Yeah. So, from my point of view, if the person in the magic shop doesn't leap on it, there's a hint there. Do you know what yeah. I mean? And so, yeah. you know, so there's stuff that I see that I think, I've been surprised, I've been surprised, I was talking about past, present and future with Rick Lex, should have put more of them in. I thought it was, I thought it was a good trick, but I think it's a really, really, really good trick. Gonna get yeah. more in. I'm gonna stock it so I can send it out the next day. Um, the same with some of the, um, uh, easy, you know, some some of the new Murphy stuff. Um, yeah, definitely getting it in. I can push it. it I honestly, wholeheartedly believe that it's a good trick. So I've got it in. That's what Prop Dog would do. We go. I believe it's a good trick. I've got it in. Someone comes in the shop. We can show it to them, hand on heart tell them it's a good trick and that they can perform it and you're away. No, you've got to know your customer base, obviously. So you wouldn't sell, you know, there are some things that you wouldn't sell to a complete beginner, some things you wouldn't sell to a pro, whatever. Um, but that idea of shops not putting their money down on a trick, but only getting it in when someone's seen it, been tempted by someone walking across the railway tracks and put down their cash, then, then that is where I think there's a flaw or, you know, that, that, that sits uneasy with me. That's selling something, even, yeah, selling something that you're not willing to actually buy in yourself, even one copy, you know. And, and that's what Prop Dog have done. And I think that they've built a community of people up that trust their decisions you know as uh, you, you know you and and dave and everybody else that decides this trick's good this trick's not good we're not going to get this in we are going to get this in we're not going to list this we are going to list this yeah the the group of people that you as a shop have 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 built up that community of people they trust your decisions i think and if something is not in a prop dog i know i've spoken to people and they've decided they've made their purchasing decisions based on whether prop dog stock it or recommend it or not. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled with that. I hope we were right. <laughs> um, <laughs> there, is, there is pressure there, but also we know, I mean, the best thing about one of the great things about prop dog is because it's a walk-in shop, there are people who, you know, um, I don't know if they, so if they're going to buy the invisible deck, for example, I can test whether or not they can add up to 13. You know, I can give them a quick test. I can tell how it's done. Uh, you know, because it depends on what age they are, all that sort of. You know, I don't. I'd love someone to take the invisible deck and run with it, but if they're not, you know, whatever. It's, so it's an example. And if they can't do it, they're not buying it. That's the way prop dog works. 
it's like, well, you know, come back, come back to your time when you can, or or whatever. Um, and there are customers that we know what their skill levels are or where they work, and you can just go, look, it's not for you. It's just not for you. You'll never do it. And, and don't we don't want to sell it to them because you know yeah. we don't want stuff. I don't want stuff going in people's bottom drawer. That buyer's remorse is just horrible. I've had it so many times. Um, and yeah, you know, desperate to think that, oh my God, that's, you know, back in my day, it was a 10 or 15 quid that I'd be crying into my, uh, my, my tea on the train back to, to Bath with. But um, yeah, I hate it. And I don't, I don't want that to happen to, you know, if I can reduce that, uh, then I think that's what my job is. That's really great. And then obviously the other thing that's been a big part of building up this community around Prop Dog is the lives that you've been doing every Friday. I mean, they've become <laughs> hugely popular over the years. And I think they started in lockdown, did they? Or around about the lockdown uh, period? No, yeah, before lockdown. Um, yeah, yeah. So, um, I mean, lockdown was a strange time for everybody, uh, particularly bad time for me. Um, but but going into Prop Dog and, and having a laugh with those lives um, was so refreshing. Um, and certainly, um, I think what was really nice was that Dave is, is a complete superstar and he got the recognition. So back in my day, he was, you know, he was a top pro. You know, he could still be a top pro, uh, but he decided to, to, to change his life and start Prop Dog. Um, and I think the live sport brought uh, uh, him back into the limelight, and, and he got to he gets to show off occasionally some of his skills um, and his knowledge, um, which is really good. Um, and and so yeah, so people got to know Dave, and I think he's still, uh, uh, you know, if I get if I get half as well, I don't know a tenth of the views for this uh, interview as he got for his, um, I'll be oh. amazed. But. Um, and I think that I was just flipping through it. I think the amount of views he's got is just phenomenal. And it really says something about, about him and Prop Dog and what he created. Yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah. oh he's the national treasure. And that brings us to uh, your new venture. Or, I, or let's transition into this by talking about where Prop Dog is right now and then what's, what that has led you to end up doing. Because... Things have changed with Prop Dog in the last few months, and it's escalated quite quickly. You know, even just six months ago, uh, I remember when I was in London filming for BGT with Rylan, and we oh, yeah. went into the shop, and it was a buzz, and everybody was like, "It was yeah. a, you know, Christian Grace was in there, and and lives were going on, and it was just like absolutely massive." Fast forward six months. Um, <laughs> It feels like Prop Dog's winding down a little bit. Um, and it feels like there's, let you know, the lives have been a little bit um, yeah. sporadic and, yeah. and there's less new products coming in and you don't see Dave very often. And there's been a lot of speculation as to what's happening. So maybe we can set the record straight and then what has that what that's meant for you, if that's up. Yeah, so... Uh... Dave doesn't do things by halves. So um, he, uh, right, uh, I mean, I'm sure if you went back and watched his interview, I think he goes into great detail about the financial pain in the butt of running a real life walk in magic shop. None of this by appointment stuff is open 9 30 to 5 30. Um, sometimes later, if uh, if you're in the know, uh, you know, there are, I am probably in there at eight and uh, probably stay there a bit later. So, you know, and all of the stock that's in there, um, the, the, you know, the logistics of it, um, the customer service of it, everything. And having so much in stock is a nightmare. The insurance is a nightmare. The business rates are a nightmare. Uh, insurance, everything. Dave will get Dave will I'm sure go into far more detail about it in his interview. And I think you mentioned it with um, uh, your uh, World Magic Shop thing. It's the fact that you spend a lot of time doing administrative tasks and spending money keeping this thing running. And actually, what really, you know, if you refocus, you could probably 
be financially just as well off with a lot less trouble. Um, yeah. And Dave uh, created Prop Dog from nothing. Uh, well, from from his ring fly and uh, his products that he's created. Um, and that was what he wanted to do. He wanted to create products. It's Prop Dog. He wanted to create prop. That's why there's the workshop downstairs. That is why you can still walk. Just want this thing. And I mean, I can remember doing it. I had a telephone box that I wanted Superman to fly out of. Um, and I bought this little telephone box, one of the first times I went to the prop dog, and Dave grabbed it and put on his little magnifying goggles and he was downstairs chipping away. And uh, I had a cup of tea. And when I came back, he, he'd made, literally made, exactly what I just asked for. And then you've got to try and squeeze some money into his palm. Um, and that's what Prop Dog was about. It was about making stuff, whether custom ideas for him or Dave's ideas. And then, and then I'm, I'm talking about where Prop Dog used to be, and <laughs> not where it's going now. But that was that was what Prop Dog. That was Dave's original plan. It grew into something different. It grew into something completely amazing, and it is still amazing. Uh, but Dave's outlook now is uh, he's done it. I guess he's done it. Yeah. You know, I would say he's made the best magic shop in the UK, if not the world. Um, yeah. It's time now for him to do something else that doesn't require him putting in, you know, 12 hour days, you know, um, and not making very much money necessarily. So uh, hopefully uh, his plan is that Proctor will still exist. It will still go on. It will still have the amazing customer service, but it will just be Dave in Wales selling prop dog products and him creating new products and doing custom work for people, which is what he loves doing. You know, if you've ever seen Dan in his workshop, he absolutely loves it. Give him a challenge, he'll love it. So that's what prop dog's doing. So prop dog, so that's why, right, here we go. So I've got to try and condense this somehow, isn't it? I'm waffling. No, it's fine. This is really interesting. <laughs> he, um, uh, yeah, so the, the lease, for the building is up in September. And that's the crunch time. So the lease is basically they're, they're increasing the money, they're increasing the rent, everything's going up. Um, and Dave just thought, well, that's a good time to, you know, that's a date, isn't it? You know. Uh, so we've stopped getting in new stuff, basically. So we've got loads of stock. God knows how many hundreds of thousands of pounds is still in stock. Uh, go and find it. Some of it, I'm sure I could probably still find some gold. Um, a lot of it went in the Black Friday sale, but there is still, you know, classics of magic still waiting to be bought, just not the new stuff. So stop getting in the new, the new uh, Murphy stuff, and uh, slowly the workshop will move to Wales, and then yeah, I guess uh, probably before September because you've got to get the unit empty and everything else. Uh, the shop will shut, and it will just be Dave. Um, in Wales. Um, in the meantime, uh, you know, yep, staff have staff have gone, um, and uh, the shop is surely shrinking as the as the stock finishes. But um, the customer service is still there. It's all gonna, you know, all of the good prop dog products are still there, and and that's gonna continue for a long time. They're gonna keep that alive. Um, so yeah. Does it feel a bit weird for you that? Um... You know, like Dave's no longer there. You know, just a year ago, Prop Dog had like six or seven staff. It was just like absolutely rammed. It was just constantly checking new things coming out and trying to work out what the new thing is. And you kind of now almost like the last guy there. You know, you're you're on your own. You're trying to keep the Prop Dog name going. Dave's happy. So it's not like, I, I don't want people to think this is a negative thing. because It's not because this is what Dave wants. It's not like, oh, hey, Prop Dog failed he hasn't Dave's done what he's wanted to do and now he's moving on to another part of his journey but for somebody who's watched prop dog grow and watched it become this amazing thing it's a lot of the aspects of that are now just slowly almost like falling away and you're just left there kind of on your own just trying to keep it going <laughs> until the inevitable day where you ain't going to move to Wales and it's kind of like well okay no. that was a good run for the last five <laughs> You know what I mean? It's, is, is it kind of it a was, weird... I'll situation? tell you what, it was a brilliant run. It was a brilliant run. Uh, I wouldn't change it uh, for the world. The people, the staff, what you get to do, 
the job uh, was absolutely brilliant. Uh, and yeah, no, Top Dog's very, very close to my heart. Um, it is very sad uh, that it's changing. For me, you know, I think Dave's probably a little bit sad, for sure. Um, yeah, no, it's very sad. Uh, and it's emotionally, there have been times when, I think, you know, you've got to say goodbye to the members of staff that you've just spent years with, you know, and come really close to and you've messed about and, you know, all of that stuff. Um, it is very hard. It is very hard. And it's very hard not having the latest staff. Um, it's horrible for once saying, no, we don't have this in stock. Um, that you know that that's a tough thing to get used to um but life changes and i guess my job at the moment is to keep the customer service up keep the customers happy to keep the prop dog you know still be fun and 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 you know we are still there um it's just the murphy stuff is going and the penguin stuff's going and car shark stuff I'm like, you know it's just going to be prop dog I wish to make make amazing products, but um, emotionally it's tough. It is tough, um, and seeing the shelves um, be empty, the stuff moving out. You know, you know, one of the tables from the workshops gone. There's big empty spaces, um, and yeah, being the last person, <laughs> yeah, turn off the lights when you leave. Yeah, yeah, it's weird. It is weird. Uh, and, yeah. So and I had to. And the other aspect of this, which is quite sad, is that. We don't really have a magic shop in London now, other than International, um, which is which is a great magic shop, but it's 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 got a very limited range of stuff. Um, we don't, re you know, obviously Davenport's went yeah. away during the pandemic. Um, with Prop Dog going, yeah. don't really have outside of International a magic shop in the capital city of the UK. No, which. Uh is one of those things I'm desperate to correct. Um, I must say, so international, I mean, I tell you what, uh, I spoke to Martin, I sat with Martin at uh, the London Magic Convention, and I, you know, whatever you say about um, uh, international magic and everything else, Martin has a brilliant magical mind. And I don't think he's got, a, I just want to say this now, because you mentioned his name, um, he, he's been a great friend to me. I don't see him as often, obviously, as I used to when I used to come up uh, every couple of weeks uh, from Bath. Um, so I hadn't seen him for a couple of years, but, you know, he knew like, I bought the boat, so I don't know how that got out or, or any of that stuff. So he had a nice chin wag. Um, but his magical mind and some of the stuff that he's come up with over the years, he really deserves a lot of, lot of credit for, for, for his creativity, and magic, which, because he doesn't put it out there too much, he just sells it in that that little shop uh he doesn't put you know doesn't sell in the vast numbers doesn't get the publicity but um yeah no great guy um i forgot what your question was now yeah uh, yeah, just oh, the, magic the, shops uh, yeah magic shops yeah, the only one is international right? yeah and and there does need to be one which is uh, uh hopefully what we're going to lead on to uh, uh whenever you're ready that's, now <laughs> that's where the, you know just like a phoenix rising from the ashes um <laughs> You have decided to uh, embark on a new venture um, as Prop Dog starts to wind down, which is kind of really interesting because you have options in front of you. You know, I mean, I know we've talked about woe is you, Prop Dog shutting, what are you going to do? I mean, you're an incredible performer. Uh, I know we talked about you get very nervous, but you're still, I've watched you perform. You're a very good performer. If you wanted to go and do full time, uh, if you wanted to go and make it full time, you could. Absolutely not a problem. Um, but but you've chosen to continue down the route of working in a magic shop, but this time setting up your own magic shop. So I suppose before we talk about what that is, what made you decide that? What made because I'll be honest with you, you know, I know a bit or two about business and um I I, I know a lot about marketing, and that's a brave decision. You know, I mean, uh, magic is a very small industry. There's there's a fair few dealers in the UK anyway. Um, it's interesting that that you made that decision. It's a it's a uh, especially spending the last few years with Dave moaning about how you can't make money as a magic shop, which is basically what he said every single time I've ever met him. Oh, you know, there's no point. You know, you end up making three pence a trick. And so, 
And now here's you going, well, okay, I'm going to do the same thing then. Like, where did that all come from? Uh, well, I mean, that's a, I'm, I'm an idiot. Um, <laughs> I, I'm even an idiot, I'm a genius. I, no, no, definitely an idiot. I think, um, I'll tell you what it is. I think, uh, I guess, um, the bad stuff to keep happening, good people do nothing. That's it. So uh, I think I'm probably, I want to be a good force in magic. I think there's a everywhere in the world of magic. I think Prop Dog changed magic uh, or magic dealers. It was a different style. It operated differently. And that is what I want to continue. Uh, I think I can change the way, hopefully I can change the way people shop or think about what they buy. Uh, I, I suppose, I mean, it still sounds very grand, but um, I'm putting my faith in people and the magic consumers to trust that there is an alternative to just browsing down through the endless downloads that come out and the funny backed cards that come out, searching for some goals, and hopefully I can sift it all out for them, help them produce another, another, yeah, a change. I don't know, it's a different philosophy, different ethos out there than other magic shops. Uh, yeah. And just be the magic shop that I've always wanted to walk into, is the answer. Oh, so tell me all about the new venture. Where are we right now? Because there is a website. There is a website. It, it is live. We are, yep. you are running right now yep i suppose what what tell tell us about the new company what right, it stops and what's going on with it right now and then your goals and aspirations for it moving forward okay so i guess if you've got through this far through the interview you deserve to know all about monster magic that is it okay so Absolutely. that's it you've got to earn it you've got to earn it people you've got to get through i don't know how long we've been going but if you can sit through my dribble <laughs> up until this point, before I mention magic, mon magic uh, monstermagic.co.uk, um, which is the most heavily curated magic on online, online at the moment, magic shop ever. Uh, it is only selling the stuff that I uh, would hand on heart do. That's, that's the bottom line. There's nothing... Um, uh, on there to fill any space. There's nothing to say, oh my gosh, I've only got four rope tricks. Uh, I better start getting some rope tricks in or anything like that. Um, and I've gone through, so it's the best of the latest stuff, which I've selected. And it is uh, curated golden oldies that I, I've performed for probably for years that I still love. Um, things like Sideswiped by Simon Aronson and things like that that people overlook. So the plan is, what I hope, is that people won't get bogged down in all of the latest stuff. They'll see what's on the site. They might try something old that they haven't seen before because it's old, really, and, they, and it's too far down. So the site has been up just before Christmas. It went live. Um, and, uh, yeah, that was scary because I built the site myself which uh, I don't, <laughs> the first website I've ever built. So the idea that uh, it actually works uh, was sheer joy, yet alone um, people actually using it. Uh, and- um, It's very clean though. The, 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 the site is very clean. It looks really good. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that's what I want. I want people just to see the product and, and not be bombarded uh you know i think a lot i think a lot of websites are overcrowded um so tell me what really scares me about monster magic is that it's very very personal to me um it is the shop that uh, i want to exist it's the website that i want to exist selling the products that i think should exist um i don't know you know so it's all my opinion it's all my thoughts um and uh, that makes it very scary i've got no one you know sitting beside me um so i'm very passionate about it and i think it's gonna uh, hopefully if it can be half as good as i dream it to be it'll be brilliant so um you know every product hopefully is gonna have a little 
uh, most of them do already a uh, little monster monster magic who is for um you know explaining a bit detail more than the manufacturer's blump and um, which you can't do if you if you've got you know if you've got 30 odd tricks appearing on your site overnight there's no way you can look at them or judge them so um, that's why it's so heavily curated um and uh, there's also going to be um, some Ziggy Awards, which are like the Michelin stars of magic, um, uh, which, uh, you know, if you're lucky, Craig, you might get one. Um, that'll be coming out. <laughs> so at the moment, it's all on. It's all online. Um, there's some good. Yeah, it's just the good stuff. Um, and um, I'm loving it so far. I think I've had some good, good responses. Um, and hopefully it's going to grow. I've got, I've got a lot, a lot, a lot of work to do um, on, on making sure everything is um, just what I want and, and more videos to add, as you know, um, the reviews and, and, and everything else. So all the added value I've still got to, to, to throw at it. Um, and so it's just take, it just takes time. It's the setting up period is, is the worst bit because I've got normally, you know, hopefully, you know, I'll just have a few products coming in now and again and I can really explore them and add them. But at the moment I've got, I've, you know, got several hundred on there so I mean, um, yeah you've got you, i mean there's a lot of i've had a look at the website there's a lot already on there but there's more i imagine that you want to add uh, yeah yeah but also i've got to make sure that you know if someone's going to buy i don't know charming chinese challenge you know hopefully i've written something about charming chinese challenge to help them decide whether or not it's for them or not and and, and stuff like that um so so I've, I've got to make sure that i don't add too much before i've added all of the value in um so that's where it is at the moment so it's still it, it's live it's going whilst i'm at prop dog so it's a complimentary this is the weird thing i'm still working at prop dog but monster magic is 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 still out there in a non-rival basis so uh there shouldn't really be much crossover um if there is i'll just take it off the prop dog shelf and send it to you via monster magic but um you know <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's a weird one with dave's blessing he uh he's quite happy for me to to run a magic shop from his magic shop um which is great which has never been happened never happened before in the entire history of magic that's crazy <laughs> well he's a very i mean he's a very sensible guy dave and um i guess he realizes if he's not signing it there's no harm and uh he's very kind and, and I'm, I'm i'm chuffed that he's he's letting me do it um yeah yeah so from then um hopefully hopefully it'll grow um it'll start hopefully it'll turn a profit it doesn't have to be a massive profit because i live on this pokey little boat so um which is why i'm willing to 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 chance it um i was a bit stressed earlier because it's my life savings has just gone pop uh, but anyway um you know, yeah, yeah. But you've got to do it, haven't you? You've got to do it. Um, but you've got to take risks. I always say to people, you know, the, the biggest thing as an entrepreneur is taking risks. And you have to ask yourself a question. What's the worst possible outcome? What's the best possible outcome? And if you can live with the worst possible outcome, you got nothing to lose. Give it a go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll just, yeah. I'm not quite sure what, yeah. Can't get much worse than this. So I'm all right. Um, uh, <laughs> um yeah and then hopefully so uh when prop dog doors shut uh, i'm currently you know there'll, there'll be uh, another real live walk-in magic shop um not probably in twickenham hopefully um which is far from me around the twickenham area yeah. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, the problem is, obviously, if you ever walk down your high street, you see you see decent shops shutting, big chains closing. So, um, yeah, I mean, it would take, it would take a, a particular size of fool to uh, open a magic shop uh, on a high street. So, um, can't wait. Can't wait for that one. Uh, fingers crossed. <laughs> are we going to be... Are uh, we going to start... But London you? needs it. Oh, it does. Are we going to start seeing you at magic conventions as well? Because we're used to seeing you at magic conventions as prop dog. Are we going to start seeing you down the line at magic conventions as monster magic? 
uh, not this year, Top Dog this year. Um, and then uh, hopefully Monster next year when I've got... So there will be some Monster Magic releases uh, coming out um, as soon as possible. Um, the big problem is, I don't know, you know, obviously uh, I wasn't coming from a, a very affluent position to start off with. So, uh, you've got, I mean, it's tricky to decide what you invest in or whatever, but hopefully I've, I've uh, got a very big thing coming out um, later this year, which I uh, hopefully will really put Monster on the map and really, um, oh, there's a lot riding on it. It'll really, really sort of get people interested and be a big seller. Uh, uh, so that'll be... Uh, later this year, but then of course uh, by Blackpool, I should have a, a good table's worth of stuff. Um, and yeah, so hopefully, what I'm really looking forward to, it'll be really nice if there's the Prop Dog stand, the Dietrich stand, the Miller's Custom Sponge stand, the Monster Magic stand. You know, uh, hopefully we can have an old whole aisle of uh, Prop Dog friends down at Blackpool. Um, yeah, yeah so that's the plan. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm, I'm really, uh, I don't know, I'm so excited. There were points when I thought maybe maybe it was my time to drop out of magic, maybe, you know, and now I'm just super excited about, about, the, um, about the website, about uh, maybe helping, just, just being an active part of the magic community looking forward to I love doing the London Magic Convention even though I was a I was the prop dog thing and just talking to to Peter and Martin and um everyone is just so nice in 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 the magic world you know yeah they are 100%. Uh, uh, so yeah I suppose just, you know, slightly nervous about being it's more collaborative than competitive I feel um but yeah, no, I just love, you know, it's just so great, I think, to be starting my own thing in the world of magic. I'm really excited about it. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, it's incredible. I mean, one one last question on it. Well, two last questions. First of all, um, it's it's open now, so people yeah. can order. Uh, yeah. There's a ton of stuff on there. Um, so yeah. you're shipping out daily, I suppose, because you're... Yeah, yeah. you're Running it while you're at, work, at uh, yeah, a prop dog. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so people can go on there and order right now, which is which is great, and it's it's stuff that you've handpicked that you yeah. know will uh, will be well received. Will you eventually be leveraging sort of social media? Because, like we discussed, one of the things that prop dog re did really well is they had this tribe of people that were obsessed over. Uh, yeah. so, because of the lives and, and so on and so forth is that something that you're going to be replicating I mean replicating is a big word isn't it um, hopefully I mean I'll tell you what you know um, it's impossible to avoid and, and you really shouldn't avoid it I'll admit that uh, uh, um, Mike's Mike's daughter had to up on Instagram and show me how to use it and, and everything else. So, you know, I've, I've avoided it. I don't, not a big fan in, in the same way that you get, uh, you know, forums. I think, I think because they can be so impersonal, people can do some nasty stuff. Um, and I've kept away from it. Uh, but now I have to embrace it. And I guess just not necessarily read the bad stuff. Um, but yeah, so um, definitely be, uh, the, what will be nice is so there will be reviews. I will have a review channel. Um, I'll get a live if I think I've got a following. I'll, I, will do, I will do a live show um, of some sort. Um, but what is nice is the fact that because I'll be reviewing the stuff that I've chosen to get in, I won't be, hopefully I won't be dissing any of it. So that is yeah. what will be nice. It'll be me, be me raving about stuff. Because I, I, I don't know how... I, I do get angry with some of the stuff that I've watched and that has arrived in the shop and it'll be nice to, to not have to do that. So hopefully it'll just be me being happy, uh, going, this is great. And, um, you know, having fun with it. 
uh, so yeah, so I've got an Instagram, uh, got uh, got a YouTube channel that's slowly growing, and uh, a Facebook uh, account. So it's all happening. Yeah, social media's. I might do some tips. That's a good idea. Wow, all change. I bet you didn't. I mean, it, it's weird how things can change in a year. I, you know, I, I, I went and jumped in the time machine a year ago and said, this is where you're going to be at a year later. It's going to be literally you in prop dog on your own, running two magic companies at the same time while prop dogs winding down. And you're, you, you just probably wouldn't have believed me in a million years. <laughs> it's just crazy, crazy how. No, 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 I wouldn't. No, definitely not. Well, the creation of Monster Magic was actually pretty quick. It was pretty quick. Uh, I think I was playing with... It was like a theory of, if I had a magic shop, what would it be called? Um, and then I created the Monster Magic logo just for fun. Um, and then, um, yeah, then I just built the website. <laughs> um, uh, and, not and, Wow. Well, it just occurred to me that there was a space. There was a, there was a, London has to have a magic shop. Come on. You know, I know it's got international. I'm not quite sure uh, what Martin's plans are for international. Um, but, you know, it's got, it's got to have a magic shop. And like I say, hopefully I've got a, a different philosophy and I just want people to, to hopefully come along with me for the ride. And, and and embrace what I'm doing. Well, you know what? I think that uh, I think that you've built a lot of goodwill up. Uh, you know, a lot of people have got to know you over the last few years, and a lot of people trust you and trust your opinions, and they know that you're honest. And uh, I think that when people find out that the essence or the uh, you know, what made Prop Dog so great is going to continue on in a different form, but continue on in a different form. I think people will, uh, I think people will really, really, really get on board this with you, Alex. I really do. And and I think the most important thing is that you're a really nice guy. You shoot from the hip. You're honest. And, but, but you also care about customer service. And... As long as you continue to do that, I can't see a reason why this couldn't be successful. I think that you're you're onto a winner. Oh, thank you. I hope so. I hope so. I, you know, I think um, I don't know. I think perhaps you. I mean, a lot of people have said, oh, "Hey, what are you doing? What are you doing?" But yeah, you've got to, you've got to have a bit of self belief, and I do. Uh, I think if you're good to people, people will be good to you. Um, and you know, um, yeah, and I'll tell you, I'm interested. I don't know how you do doing reviews about it. I mean, there are people, I don't know, I'll say no one, no one intends to bring out a, a bad magic trick, but some people have got me very angry. And, um, you know, you, when, you, when you're honest about a product, sometimes. It's tricky to be polite about the person who's made it, and I'm really looking forward to uh, to, 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 to not having to, you know, to, uh, to hopefully save everybody else the trouble of um, what seeing through what I've sat through over the years. I will um, say, being a magic and reviewer, yeah, think it's probably... hmm? I will say, being a magic reviewer is a difficult thing because. If you rave about something, you're going to have people that say, oh, you're only saying that's good because of an agenda. Yeah, yeah. And if you say something's terrible, then you'll have a percentage of people turn around to you and go, well, you know, you don't know what you're talking about. You've just got an issue with this person. You just can't win a lot of the time. It's like, it's like you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. And, it, and the problem is it's your opinion, isn't it? So... You know, it's interesting. So I did. I wasn't a big fan of um, something Christian Grace brought out, which probably reversed on on a, on on watching it all over again. I was probably a bit harsh, um, but uh, uh, I spoke to Christian about it 
the other day and he was like oh the only person to call me out on this the only person to you know say this about it and we had a really nice chat about it and i think yeah i was probably you know i had a heart i was probably a bit harsh you know probably in a bad mood that day or whatever it might be um but he took stuff on board he really genuinely listened to 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 what my concerns were with it and that, that's the great thing about being a reviewer i think if you can um you can improve what's coming out because you know then, then you then you you're, you're laughing I agree. but yeah you do a great job so hats off to you well i can't wait to see what the future holds for you uh it's so interesting to see your journey and where you started from uh, and where you are now, I bet you never thought you'd be in a situation where you're running your own magic shop. But uh, I, you know. I, I, I just, I just hope. I'll tell you what we can, we should, we should, you know. Let's let's see if I'm still here in a month. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure, you will be. <laughs> I, I, what I really, what I would really like is, is perhaps for you and Christian Grace and the Nymans to all be in a little shop in Twickenham. Uh, that would be really great, you know, um, because those are the moments that I've really enjoyed. Um, you know, when you, when you, when you have the people in the shop, uh, yeah. it's great. It is good. Well, mate, you open up that shop and I will come there and I'll be a regular 100%. Perfect. I will definitely be a regular. I'm in London all of the time. So I'll be more than happy to come and, and You're be everywhere all of the time. So I must just say, so to, because if you're talking about you have been to Kent today and back, haven't you? Yes, yes. Yeah, and, I left and, at, and obviously uh, done a show in between. Yeah, I left at half five in the morning, got to the warehouse, loaded the van, got on the road at seven, got to Kent at Maidstone around about 11, did the show from 12 until about half three. Struck down, got out by five, stopped for food on the way back, got back at nine, and then we, uh, well, about nine, half nine actually, and then we started this interview at 10. So, yeah. So that is incredible. So I'm going to tell you what, you are looking knackered. I'd have a little power nap before your next interview, which is probably going to be in two minutes' time. <laughs> in a couple of minutes' time, yeah. No, the, the, you know what? I, 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 I don't mind working hard. And, and, uh, but the thing is, I desperately wanted to do this interview with you. And I wanted to do it as soon as possible because I really, uh, you know, you're one of the good guys in magic, Alex. And I wanted to shout from the rooftops about Monster Magic because if the community rally behind you, we can make this venture a success for you. And I really want to see this as a success because you've taken the risk, you're putting yourself out there, you've got the best intentions in the world. And I believe that you've got this vision and if this vision comes to uh, comes to comes to be, and it, it it actually works like you want it to, I think it's going to benefit the magic industry, the magic community in this country, uh, and future generations and people that are going to be within this industry for a long time. So I, I really want everyone that's watching this interview to to rally behind you. Go check out Monster Magic. The link's going to be in the description down below. Go buy something. Uh, I know I will be. Anything, anything. <laughs> no, no, I will be. Well, I've got. I, well, I've been talking to you. I've been having a look round, and a clock that you've got uh, a uh, cue the magic, which yes, yes, uh, yes. which Ryland has been wanting for his stage show for ages. So it's absolutely um, brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. Get the right spectator, you've got gold there. Oh, absolutely. So I'm going to be uh, going on there probably later on today or tomorrow. I'm going to be ordering a cue the magic. So. Uh, Lovely stuff. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to be supporting you, and I want everyone else to do the same thing as well. But um, thank, you. thank you so much for thank coming you. on the show. I really appreciate it. People can connect with you, um, you know, obviously on social media. We've talked about Facebook, um, Instagram, so on and so forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, where, where, if people want to see your review channel, uh, what's the. Uh, what? um, yeah, Monster, Monster Magic Shop on um, YouTube. Uh, there's only one. There's only one thing up there at the moment. Um, like I say, I've got to learn the stuff, and I've got to. So, so the difference is. So what? I'm not in a rush. So uh, someone, someone, uh, <laughs> the winner of Strictly Come Dancing actually said, uh, "Slow is the fastest way to get to where you want to be." Mm. Um, 
and so with the review channel uh like i say uh you know i'm i'm gonna learn the trick i'm gonna go out and perform it a lot and see if i can see what i genuinely think about it try and do it in different situations and then review it um because i'm not necessarily getting in all the latest products all of the time you know that review can be there under the product and people can really see what that product is really about um so yeah so it's a slightly different review channel in fact it's just not the latest stuff which i know you you obviously delve backwards as well um, yeah. so yeah so it's, so it's more you know uh reviewing what i've got well we stand on the shoulders of giant stuff it's a lot of hard work though isn't it yes <laughs> oh, yes yeah, it's more than people could ever realize um but I want people to go onto your YouTube channel. I want them to go and check out your website, go and buy something. Is there a mailing list on there? Can they subscribe to There the is mailing a mailing list. list. You can sign up. You can win 10% off with this really funny uh, uh, wheel thing. Have you done it? Don't get, don't get 10%. Don't get 10% off Cube the Magic. No, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> I'll do the 10% thing after ordering Cube the Magic. How's that sound? <laughs> That's amazing. And uh, yeah, amazing stuff. Thank you so much, Alex. I really appreciate it. And, uh, you know, if you ever want to shout out about anything on Magic TV, just let me know. I'll be more than happy to help. Brilliant. I'll see you at Blackpool. Absolutely. Guys, do me a favor. Leave a comment down below. Let Alex know what you thought of the interview. Go check out monstermagic.co.uk. Subscribe to all of the social media platforms. Together, we can help Alex make this a huge success, which is what he deserves. His time is now. Uh, so leave a comment down below. On behalf of Alex, thank you so much for checking out his interview. And I will see you again soon. I'm Craig. This is Alex. See you again soon on Magic TV. <laughs>